there we go. Uh, as usual, let me know if I need to adjust volume of anything. I guess it's just just going to be my voice this time. So let me know if you can't hear me. Um, of course, if you can't hear me, then you probably won't have heard me ask you to let me know. But um, we'll figure it out. <laughs> my uh, my captions are going, so you should be able to hear me. Anyway, uh, I'm Isaac. I use he, him pronouns, and today I will be modeling some random objects in Blender. I've been doing this for most of my uh, previous streams for the last several weeks. Um, and we've, we've worked on a few things on the stream, uh, most of which is in this file right now. Um, I, I don't know what I was doing with this random like angled shape. I may have been trying to remake this table. I'm not sure. I think I'm just gonna delete that. Oh, and then, yeah, let's delete this and we don't need the collection it was in uh, because today I plan to I actually had an object I planned to model today um, but let's see what did we have oh we had this little bed I totally forgot that I made that apparently I made two of them I think this one was like a little simpler or something. Interesting. Okay, so um, today I wanted to model a basic wooden crate, um, and it might not take me the whole stream time, but if that's the case, we'll figure out something else to model as well. Um, crates, I feel like, are a, a good component of any basic like video game scene um, so yeah we'll, we'll be doing that I'm gonna keep this door in here it's kind of my scene reference object for for scale so that I don't have to keep looking at um, actual measurements of things we'll just scale things in relation to this random door. Um, let me turn on my screencast keys thing tool. There we go. I use this in every stream. Um, uh, Blender involves a lot of uh, keyboard shortcuts um, to do random various things. So anytime I press a button it will show up down here and give you a slightly better idea of what I'm doing at, at any given time hello hi how are you doing today I'm I'm a little warm in here right now apparently it's 75 degrees in this room but uh, I have a window unit but it sits right behind me, um, so I don't really want to run it right now. It's, it's not too bad. I, I tend to bear temperatures up to like 78 or 79. <laughs> Glad to hear you're pretty good. That is good. So let me get started with a new collection here, and we'll call it Wooden Crate, because that's what we're making. Um, and uh, I hadn't thought very much about how to go about this because it should be fairly simple but I think just to be thorough let me launch um, paint and do a quick little little plan so we're gonna have a wooden crate that's like made out of planks um, so it's going to have like a basic square shape and I think we'll do one of those crates that has like a almost like a border around everything so you can see like the, the corners this is weird I'm doing like one point perspective on a box anyway um, so it'll have these 
kind of borders on all of its faces and then uh, the middle will be made up of individual planks like this however many and then I think I like to look at the ones that have like another diagonal plank going across like this so that would cover up these these middle pieces I'm not gonna erase all of that but it doesn't matter um, so yeah like like this we'll we'll go for for this um, And so honestly, I might just be able to start with a cube and move from there. That might be good. Let's try that. So let me, I have the right collection selected. I'm going to add a new mesh. I want to start with a cube. And yeah, put it right there. That's fine. I'll move it. I'm going to work on it over here. Doesn't really matter where. We work on it, and uh, it's a little big. I don't want crates that are this huge. Again, just compared to the door. So, okay, that's that's good enough. We can resize the whole crate after we're done. I, it, it's the kind of object where you would definitely duplicate it and resize it and place a bunch of them around. Um, all right, so we're gonna hop into we're in object mode right now. We'll go over to edit mode so that we can adjust the the faces and vertices and whatnot. So all right, I'm not sure the best way to go about this, but I'm gonna try something and see if it works. So we're gonna select all of the faces, and I want to create that border and. Um, so this, this border here around the outside. The best way I can think of to do that would be to like for for this face, for instance, the, the highlighted one, we would um uh oh what's the objective today? I am making a wooden crate. It may not be very hard, but I haven't thought about it very much, so we'll we'll see how it goes. So, okay, I'm trying to make this little wooden border around, this would go around each face of the, the crate. Um, and the easiest way I can think of to do that is to take the face and extrude it, so make kind of a new face out of it. Um, but I want to leave it in place and scale it in. So that gives kind of a this is the border that we're we're going for and then we can take this border or okay we could take the resulting face and kind of move it uh, extrude it in to give a, a lip like that but I want to do that to all of the faces and I want to do it in the most efficient way possible so I'm going to try doing it to all of the faces at the same time it may not work but we'll see so I'm selecting all of the faces and I will extrude them, leave them in place, scale them all. Okay, I can't scale all of them. Um, that doesn't work properly. So we'll just go and scale them individually and that should work fine. Uh, we just want to make sure we scale them by the same amount each time. So we'll probably type in a number for this. Let's go with 0.75. How's that? And we'll say that's fine. So we'll scale all the rest of these. Oops, 7.5. There we go. Okay, this one looks weird. What happened? Oh. Why did it do the bottom one? I don't know what happened here, so we're going to start over. And I'm just going to do this um, to each face. We'll just do the same, same procedure to each face. So I'm going to extrude it, leave it in place, 
and scale it to 0.75. And we'll do that to all of the other ones. Extrude, scale to 0.75. Extrude. And the top one. And the bottom one. There we go. So we've we've almost got the border. I just need to move. We'll see if we can do all of these at once. I need to move all of these faces in a little bit more to, to give them a lip. Um, yeah, that works. Okay. Oh, almost. It gives it kind of a diagonal lip. Interesting. We'll keep it. That's fine. All right, so it's kind of a, a cube right now instead of like a, a crate. Uh, but we'll fix that. So I think I don't need any of these interfaces, so we'll get rid of them. Okay, delete these faces. Cool, we have kind of a, a crate uh, frame now. And so now I think I'm going to so uh, we have this brown part around the outside now uh, and now I'm going to put these these vertical planks in they won't be red that's just that's how I was highlighting them so I think I want to uh, hmm. I want to keep this easy, but I feel like the resulting object is not going to be simple because of that. So we're going to add in a new cube and turn it into a wooden plank. It needs to flatten a bit and narrow a bit. And we're going to put it like right in there, <laughs> almost, uh, scale it, it needs to be taller, not quite that tall, so yeah, kind of, kind of right there. So yeah, this is where this is going to get complicated. We're just going to add in a lot of geometry that you won't be able to see. All this stuff in the back here will be hidden when I'm done. So I think I'm going to... Oh, this is not a separate object. Whoops. Um... Yikes, how do I separate this? There we go. I wanted it to be two different objects. So we've got the frame of the crate, frame move, and a side plank. to rotate this slightly just
Oh, okay. That was rotating strangely. It's better now. Okay, so we have one plank and we're just gonna duplicate it a bunch. And build the, the side of the crate. And we want to be able to see the individual planks, so I'm going to move them like forward and backwards and rotate them differently. It'll be kind of a messy, not super well constructed crate. Okay. So yeah, now there's kind of an edge there. You can't see it very well, but it's there. Um, oh, and I did that again. Uh, I keep making these all part of the same object. There, that's better. It's because I need to be duplicating the object and not my selection of the object. Blender is complicated. I wanted to have five. Oh, that's better shading. You can see the <laughs> the edges there now. Um, how many did I draw? Ooh, I drew six planks. Um, let's see if we can scale these. Make them a little bit wider and kind of stretch to fit the the inside of the crate face here without me having to make a, a fifth plank. Okay, and this needs to move over slightly. I can see in between them. Oh, there's a random extra one in there. That's no good. still see between this? No, okay. Cool, so that's one side done and we're just gonna reuse all of these planks uh, for, for each new side. So let me duplicate this and bring it over to the other side. This still doesn't look right. I don't know, it's fine. Uh, okay, duplicate it again, and this time we're gonna rotate, hopefully, all of it. 
Yeah, 90 degrees. There we go. And bring it in line with this side. Good. And duplicate for this side. Do the top. This needs to rotate this way 90 degrees. Okay, and the bottom. the basic crate. I just want to do that diagonal strip. Uh, so let me grab one of these, duplicate it, and rotate it this way. What? Negative 45? Yeah. And this might end up looking weird. We'll see. side. see it from back here. Cool. I can still see it from back here. Okay, this board right here needs to move back a little bit. looking great thank you it is almost done I think I'll put this little diagonal piece on just two of the sides let's see what that looks like so let's duplicate this and bring it to this opposite side it's a little hard to get it looking right Is 
it done? Or it might be done. This crate is probably, you know, strong enough. Um, okay, let's add some materials to it um, to get it looking brown instead of gray. So I'm gonna just, why is everything see-through? Oh, okay. Got it. So, okay, I'm gonna just reuse the, these materials that I already made for other shades of wood. So let's, um, let's pick one randomly and then maybe we'll have different planks be different color wood. That only applied that to the last one. Okay. This lighter one, it looks a little little weird to me. That's fine. I'm gonna have to move this light around so I can see the other sides of this a little better. Yeah, I don't like this lighter color. It's a little strange looking with the two different colors of wood. Uh, I'm gonna leave it for now. Let's see, so what's gonna bother me about this is um, if I go inside here, there's like all of these faces that you can't see on this crate, but they're still here. It still takes like computer resources to render these. Um, I could go through and delete some of these back facing pieces um, on the inside. 
but I don't know if it's worth it. It may not be. I'm not really sure. I think for now I will... I wonder if I can combine all of these objects into just one. I can. That's very interesting. I don't know if that's good to do. <laughs> I don't know enough about the, the technical parts here. Uh, but it will make it easier to copy it. I'll just call this crate. That's fine. I think we'll keep it like that for now. Um, I mean, if I had to go back and recreate this, that, that would be the worst case scenario, and it wasn't too bad. It took like 20 minutes to make. So let's try uh, duplicating a few of these and just see what they look like next to each other. Maybe change the scale. And let's see, I wouldn't want to have them like this because you can tell that it's the same thing copied. So let's rotate this, I don't know, 180 degrees this way and um, 180 degrees some other way. There, they're totally different crates now. <laughs> probably be a lot easier to pretend they're different crates if they all were the same like all the planks were the same color I think these multicolored crates are a little little weird looking um, why don't we fix that <laughs> so I'm gonna go back into edit mode and delete one of these Actually, let's delete both of these. Oh, okay. And apply a new material. We'll just do it this way. We want this to be kind of brown, so that's just orange but dark. And I don't want it to be shiny at all, so that's the roughness. It should be very rough because it's a wood material. So we'll take this roughness value up very high. I don't remember what specular does. Looks like it kind of makes it uh, shiny, but in a different way. We'll lower that. I'm not really sure what that does, though. Okay, that looks alright. And we'll call this material um, crate wood. I think I like that better than the multicolored crate. If I wanted to do, like, vary the shade of brown for each plank, that, that would almost make sense, but I would want the two colors to be closer together than the two that I had chosen before. They kind of looked just like completely different colors before. Alright, and now let's duplicate this and uh, mess with it. Change the scale, move it around, rotate it. Let's 
move this light also. This is in a weird spot. Oops. Okay. Let's get like a stack. This would look less like strange if I add in like a background, uh, just a floor. <laughs> Those shadows are <laughs> doing kind of weird. Blender is uh, not enjoying making shadows right now. Not sure why that is. I guess we just have very faint shadows for all of these things. That's weird. I don't really care about the shadows too much anyway. Uh, just for fun, let's make this. Uh, floor a different material as well. Uh, let me uh, remove my Steam notifications real quick. Um, so that those don't pop up. Over the stream. How do I even do that? There we go. That should be better. I just did that on my other monitor. Okay. Cool, so now we've got a door, some, oh yeah, I was gonna put a new, let's make this floor a different color. Um, give it like a weird, I don't know, something. I don't want everything to be brown. Let's uh, let's do like a really light blue color. Sure, that's fine. Um, that contrasts against the brown pretty well. You can see the cracks in the store really easily now. Cool. I think these crates fit with this door fairly well. What else did we have? We had a bench. It fits in okay. That bench is looking really flimsy. Um, we had a table. Everything is brown. I'm making everything out of wood. Um, let's see, I'm not really sure what else I wanted to make. Um, I'm still not sure how to make like walls <laughs> for things. I'm not sure the best way to do that. Um, like it's kind of weird that we have a, a door with no wall to hold it. Uh, and we've got kind of like exterior objects and interior objects just kind of chilling out. I, I think I tried to make, yeah, I tried to make a, of course it was brown as well, a brown hut. Uh, 
but it's kind of just a cube. Looks a little weird. I probably need to get into texturing for these things to make more sense. Let's see, let's focus on the table and make some random objects that would go on the table. Let me rename this background plane, this is the floor. We'll leave all these other random objects in the background. They might make it more fun to, to model around them. And let's see, what goes on a table? Uh, some of it's going to be stuff I've already made in past streams. Let me try to avoid that. Why don't we give it a basic like tablecloth? That should be fairly straightforward, I think. We'll see. I'm going to start with a plane for that. And we'll add this to the table collection. That's fine. This is going to be. Tablecloth, yes, that's the word. Oops, okay, let's move this over the table. Maybe I can do this in shaded view mode so it's more fun. Okay. The shadows are just gonna freak out the whole time. It's fine. Yeah, so this is a more or less square table. We'll just give it a one of these like rotated square tablecloths that drapes over the sides. Um, turn off shadows. I probably can somehow, but we'll just switch back to that's gonna... Oh, <laughs> that's how you do it. Cool. Alright, so I need to edit this plane so that I can make it kind of drape over the sides the way I want to. Um, let's see, what happens when I try to place a loop cut no, I might just need to use the knife tool. Where is that? Here it is. So with the knife tool, I should be able to like cut across this object like this but it doesn't want to line up the way that I'm used to
Mm -hmm. I'm trying to cut across this shape right here like this so that I can then kind of drag this corner vertex down and have the whole thing drape over the table. Oh, now it's going to do it. Okay. Oh, I need to press a different button for that. Um, let me look at this from above so that I do this correctly. Right there. And right here. And I think it's space to apply. There we go. Cool. So I've cut. I've cut the plane so that I can now kind of fold it along this line. So I can just drag this down and in towards the table. There, so it can drape over now. to bring the whole thing down a little bit though so that it's more on the table. There. All right, now I just need to do that with the other corners. All right, back into edit mode, knife tool here and here. Good, and then bring this down and in. Yeah. This is similar to Minecraft, but not in game form. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I was playing Minecraft last week, and one of the things that I have enjoyed about Minecraft over my time playing it is um, the fact that it's very much kind of a, a gateway into the world of game development related creation um, this needs to go further there we go because yeah you can very much create whatever you want in that game you could make a table it would just be made out of <laughs> lots of little blocks um, Minecraft definitely let me experiment with some of this sort of thing before I was aware of the like the actual tools that people use uh, for this kind of thing. All right, uh, we've got a little little tablecloth now, and it drapes down <laughs> about the same amount on all four corners, and it's roughly square and sort of centered. <laughs> That's good enough. Let's give it a fun material, like an actual color that's not brown. What's a good tablecloth color? I think red is fine. Reddish, somewhere in there. Kind of a darker one. And then um, let's go into the actual shaded mode so I can see what this looks like with lighting. I'll just light a little bit closer. It looks like I've got the plane a little too close to the table. You can see the tablecloth and the table are kind of blending together here if I zoom the camera out far enough. So I think I'm gonna go in here and lift this up off the table just slightly. You can actually see a gap under there now. 
but hopefully, yeah, when I zoom out now, it takes me much further before the tablecloth starts merging with the table. All right, um, let's see, let's mess around with this. Um, some of these sliders down here, I don't actually know what most of them do. The materials get complicated. Oh, that made it a very, very shiny tablecloth. You can see the reflection of the light here. Um, I don't know how to make this look like cloth, um, but that's probably close enough. Cool. Okay, so we've got a table and we've got a tablecloth. Let's put some stuff on top of the table. And let's see, we're an hour in, so we'll probably spend the next hour making random things to put on the table. So I think it would be the most, probably more like, if I wanted to be less ambitious, I could just do a couple of plates and some cups maybe. Um, it would be significantly more ambitious to try to do like a, a bowl of fruit or something. It might be too much. Fruit has a lot of weird shapes. Unless I like picked a really simple fruit that I could just duplicate a bunch, like an apple or something. Um, if I did that, I might want to change the color of the tablecloth. That would be a lot of red. Of course, I'm saying that, and there's like a million brown things in this scene right now. So I don't know. Let's try. Let's try to make a bowl, and maybe I'll put some apples in it or something. Um, so let's see, I want to start with a circle. So let's add, this will be just a flat, flat circle. And so here it is in the middle of this plane. And right now it's actually not filled with anything. It's just an empty circle. Um, Oh, orange? Are you referring to the fruit or the color? Like, sh are you saying I should make the tablecloth orange or I should fill the bowl with oranges? Because that's actually a good idea because oranges are literally just <laughs> spheres. Uh, maybe I can do apples and oranges. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, anyway, I want to fill this circle with triangles. There, now it's got, it's got a an actual center. The fruit, yeah, okay, so I'll see if I can put some oranges in there. That shouldn't be too hard. Okay, let me move the, wait, how many, I need to undo that. Okay, let's, let's start over with the circle. So we're adding a circle. I don't need it to have that many vertices. Um, so you can see what happens when I change the number of vertices in the circle, it gets more uh, it's a m more round the more vertices you go, but um, more vertices requires more computer power to render. So I'm going to go with something relatively low, like uh, 8 in the octagon. That's probably fine. Um, and should be good. It's obviously too big right now, but we'll fix that. Let me roughly center it on the table and shrink it down. This is just going to be the very base bottom of the bowl. Um, we'll, we'll build it from this. Okay, uh, 
that is fine. Let's go into edit mode and edit this. Okay, so uh, the basic method for this is to just extrude all of these faces and change the scale. And we'll kind of, we'll do that a lot. So we'll kind of make a very basic bowl shape. Uh, and you can do it pretty quickly, um, as you can see here. Um, and you know what, this is a fine enough shape, I guess. We'll give it a little vertical whip. It's supposed to be kind of big, but it's maybe too big right now. I don't know. I don't have a great scale for reference here. Maybe I'll take it over to the doorknob when I'm done with it and scale it that way based on kind of the, because the doorknob is roughly the size of a hand that gives me something. But, uh, okay. It's very square, but that's more or less the shape of a bowl. Um, but we obviously want it to be not flat on top, so let's uh, fix that. So I'm going to extrude a face, but leave it, and then scale it. This is giving the bowl thickness. So this edge of faces here will be the, um, the lip of the bowl, the very top top part of it. Um, maybe too thick? I don't know. All right, and now we will extrude inwards. And I'm gonna go into x-ray mode so I can see. I want these inside, the, the like inside curve of the bowl to roughly match the outside. So um, x-ray mode lets me see through and compare that these two lines are roughly the same height. And we'll just keep going and kind of mirror the outside of the bowl on the inside. <laughs> I probably made a weird noise on stream. That was my phone vibrating. I, th I think we'll leave it there on the inside and I'm gonna this part of the bowl won't be visible but I'm gonna do it anyway let's uh, let me move it up so I can look at the underside and I don't want this to just have a flat base at the bottom that's not how most bowls look as far as I know um, so we'll extrude and scale this in and give it kind of a lip like we did at the top. Um, and then I can move this one up. There, so it's got kind of a lip on the bottom and I can even make this kind of a concave There, so it's kind of rounded inwards. I don't know if that's realistic, but um, let me actually do the same thing to the bottom of the bowl here. There, that's, we'll, we're calling it a bowl. <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess this is um, this is kind of overlapping with some some pottery related stuff. Um, yeah, so is this lip part the part that you would like fix in the trimming stage? I guess. 
Um, let me move this back down onto the table. And yeah, so now you see why there was like, there's very little point in me actually doing anything to the bottom there because it's not visible. But it's fine, it makes me feel better. And actually, I think this this bowl is a fine size. Um, it looks okay to me. Um, so let's give it its own material as well. Um, let's see, this is where if you know things about art, you can be like, let's do a color composition based on the tablecloth, uh, but I don't know how that works. So what's a bowl color? Um, I feel like I want something like kind of grayish, almost. So barely any actual color. I don't know. We can mess with all of this later. This is kind of an ugly color. Let's do slightly lighter. Sure, purplish. It works. I have apples and oranges in it. Orange and purple. Does that look fine together? I guess we'll see. Um, okay, let's make some fruits. Uh, what does to? Oh, let me not have this bowl called circle. Um, we'll call it bowl. And can I make like a sub collection? How do I even make a okay new collection? Oh, okay, it put it in there. Cool. Um, table top, and we'll we'll call this. Why did that also rename the? Is this the bowl? Oh, there was already something called table top. <laughs> um, stuff on table. Okay, and this will hold the tablecloth and the bowl and the fruits as well. Cool. And that's just so that I can like selectively hide all of these um, and the, the whole table separately. So that's good. All right, um, let's make an orange first because it'll be easier, or it should be. Um, we're gonna do a UV sphere. I don't really remember the details for this. And we want this to be like really low level of detail. Because it's just an orange. And it's hard to see what's going on. There, that's a little better. Um, yeah, like I think this is fine. This is this aligns with our current level of detail with everything else, more or less. Oops. So let's put it over here. And okay, I'm gonna actually look at the dimensions of this. No, oh, no, I'm not, because it's in meters. <laughs> uh, we'll just make it look right, or try to anyway. Well, OK, so this should be roughly the size of like the doorknob. Um, so let's look at that. Let's bring it over there. And OK, it's a little bit bigger right now. But that might be fine. Sure, okay, we'll call that 
orange sized and I think that oranges aren't like pointy on the ends like this like we might want to scale these in um, like fruits are not perfect spheres they're just they're kind of squished spheres I think let me look up some pictures of oranges It's like the the weirdest thing to need a reference for. Um, they are actually very spherical. Let's bring these out a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, cool. Let's put this back over near our bowl. And yeah, we're not really, we're not gonna get this more detail. It's the, the overall level of detail that I'm aiming for is not, not enough to make it worth uh, trying to get this like the little little like half stem sort of thing at the top and the like hole on the other end that oranges have um, that's a little little much um, so instead we'll just give it a new material we'll call it orange and it will be orange I don't know what is the most orange like color I guess I'll refer back to my <laughs> um, reference images and let's see it should be a little more red uh, let's... color matching is hard It's a little dull looking, but it might just be the roughness. Oranges are not that rough. Like overall, like they're bumpy, but they're shiny as well. Um, oh, and let me shade this smooth. I haven't done that on, actually that looks really weird. <laughs> um, Blender has two shading modes for everything um, I haven't used these on stream yet so let me bring the beds back I did this off stream um, okay so this pillow here is set to shade smooth and what that does is kind of it tries to hide the edges on objects so if I were to shade this flat instead you can see it kind of is um, it's a very hard square looking pillow would not want to put my head on that um, but if you shade it smooth it um, well it smooths out the, the edges here it only smooths out the ones that you see like front on um, like it, it does a pretty good job ma making this bed look kind of round and this pillow look kind of round the, the problem with shading being the only thing that makes the object look look round is um, if you look at the edges of the object it, it doesn't have anything that it can do for those because it's not actually changing the geometry of the object it's just <laughs> shading it differently um, it's, a, it's a useful thing to be able to do it's just things that are shaded smooth tend to look really weird to me um, I feel like I have an easier time if everything is shaded flat, just pretending that things are smooth. Um, that's weird. Like there's almost a reflection here. It looks like trees or something. I wonder if that's the default reflective surface look. Maybe I can try to make this look okay when shaded smooth. Oranges are like almost shiny. I 
could also like give it a clear coat, but I don't think that. Yeah, this render mode looks really weird with a clear coat. And yeah, that is totally a reflection of trees that don't exist. That's really interesting. Like there's not trees on the other side, but it's reflecting trees. Uh, that just must be the reflection map that they went with for this. Interesting. Um, let's leave it like that. It's maybe too shiny. But I don't know what I'm doing, so. Cool. That's an orange. Um, this is what it looks like. Shaded smooth. And yeah, shaded flat it looks. I don't know. We'll go with smooth for now. That's fine. I'm glad to hear it looks like an orange to you. Uh, it looks close enough to me, I think. Um, so let's duplicate a few of... Actually, first, let's rename this to orange. It's not a sphere anymore. It's an orange. Um, and yeah, okay, let's duplicate a few of these. We'll rotate them differently and slightly change the scale, I think. Just slightly different sized oranges. And make sure they don't poke through the other side of the bowl. That's good. Okay. Let's have three of these kind of in here. I think there's room for one more fruit down here at the kind of base level. I'll, I'll put an apple right here. Um, and maybe stack a couple on top as well. Let's try to make an apple now. It's going to be basically the same thing. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to start from scratch because I feel like it. Let me hide this door for now and add a another sphere. And this time I think I want more rings. Those are the, the kind of stripes here. This is what the, the rings number refers to there. Okay, yep, so it brings, if I increase and decrease, you can kind of see what's happening. This is like the vertical resolution of the sphere, and then, oops, I keep, I keep getting rid of that menu. <laughs> so it brings is kind of the vertical like resolution of the sphere, and then I believe segments is kind of the horizontal. So obviously, obviously, if I bump these numbers way up, then we'll get a really detailed, very round sphere. Like you wouldn't have to uh, shade this smooth. And actually, I think I'm gonna crash Blender here. <laughs> okay, is it back? Yeah, let me not do that. Hopefully my stream quality is not affected by this, but it might be. Okay, it's back, and we'll do five here. Okay, good. Made it through without crashing Blender. Um, I don't know if my stream cut out at all through that. It, it may have, because I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure like my processor or video card was probably just dying for a moment there. Um, on that note, I'm going to save because I haven't saved all stream. If I do happen to crash Blender, um, now I'll have my current progress saved. That's, uh, that's good. Oh, okay, good. It was all good. All right, uh, what number am I actually going to go with? Um, I think six and six for both of those, probably fine. I don't remember what I did for the oranges. Yeah, 
Yeah, six and six is probably the most I would want to do for that. All right, um, then we'll rename this right now Apple. And let me show the door again so that I can use the handle as a scale again. It's a very weird looking sphere. All right. That's probably good. We'll try to like intentionally make this one bigger than the handle. Just so that the apples and oranges are a little more visually distinct. They'll just be different sizes as well as color. Um, and then I think for apples I want to... Oh, let me actually look at a reference for this. Apples have... They're not spheres. They're a little weirder than that. Um, okay, I have a reference image off on my other monitor. I'm not gonna bring it on stream for copyright reasons. Just know that I am referring to some random online image while I'm doing this. It can be very helpful to do that. I need another loop here. Let me there. Um, much weirder shape than I thought. There, that's, that's about right, I think. Let me uh, minimize my reference so I can see the chat and stuff again, okay. Uh, I'm calling this an apple shape. It's good enough. Um, I I think I want to actually add a stem to this this time. So we'll do like uh, let me add a cylinder with like three vertices. So I guess a triangular prism or whatever. Um, make it very small and skinny. And yeah, that's... Oh, I actually wanted this to be a separate object for now. Um, so let me go out of edit mode and add that back in. Um, mesh, cylinder, there we go. I need 
a different view so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so this is going to come out of the center and it needs to be smaller. to be shorter and thinner. Cool, just like a really small separate bit and I think uh, I will make it slightly more interesting. a little extreme. <laughs> That's better. Yep, okay. I think I'm going to edit this a little more. It, I'm used to apples that are like not shaped very perfectly at all. Like oranges tend to be pretty consistent, I feel like, with their, like they're pretty close to a decent sphere with actual symmetry, but I'm used to apples having like like not being this symmetrical so I'm going to hop into sculpting mode where am I and we'll move some of this around just make it not quite this perfect So yeah, we're just, we're in sculpting mode to be able to kind of organically click and drag these vertices around. Not a ton, but uh, enough to be noticeably asymmetrical in places. That's probably enough. It looks slightly more like an organic object and less of a like geometric one, just a bit. I mean, it's still got flat faces everywhere, but that's kind of the whole vibe right now. Um, okay, where's our cylinder? This is Apple's stem. And let me move this over towards the bowl. And it is bigger than I thought, so let me, uh, let me shrink it a little bit. Okay. Um, let me do materials now and then I'll move it around. So let's um, kind of separate it from the rest for now. Um, okay, let's get a red material for the kind of base of the fruit. Let me refer back to my reference again. And I'm going to shade this smooth, and that actually looks pretty decent. I 
feel like apples are a little more forgiving with the color matching than oranges are for some reason. And let's mess with some of this stuff so that's a little too rough. Apples are a bit shinier. Sometimes, anyway. Um, that's very shiny, actually. <laughs> that's fine. Um, and let's give the stem a different color, so like very dark brownish stem colored cool and now I think I'm actually gonna join these together so that they are one object there although <laughs> I don't want the stem to be this shiny it's weirdly shiny right now um, Turn the roughness up. Cool. And maybe I'll also shade the shade the stem smooth as well. Didn't really do anything, but that's fine. Okay, and we kinda have an apple. Sorta. It actually looks significantly different in the stream preview on my other monitor, but I, I think my other monitor is less color accurate. It's a little more warm toned. I don't know. I guess let me know if any of my colors look terrible. And I'll see if I can fix them, but I think they're close enough. So let's throw an apple down here in the bowl with the other fruits. And we'll put maybe one more. They kind of stand out a lot. Um, Looking good, thank you. Um, let's add one more orange to fill out some of the space in here. It's kind of hard to get these positioned in a way that looks natural. I don't really know. fruit and the, the bluish purple color is fine as well I think let me save cool I think with the, uh, the apples as well as the suggested oranges that was not as hard as I thought it was gonna be um, let me try shading this bowl smooth how does that look? That's, that's also fine. I'll leave that like that. Let me bring the floor back in. This floor is a weird color.
we have a very random collection of objects, but um, let's see. What else do we need? I guess I could put some simple cups on the table. Where did it go? Here it is. So stuff on table will have a bowl of fruit as its own collection and move all of these things in there. Cool. Kind of give it its own layer. And uh, let's see, I want to add like a, a ramekin, I guess is the word. Um, we'll keep that at eight sides, that's fine. Um, let me move this on the table and shrink it down a lot more. So this is going to have like uh, slightly sharper walls to it than the bowl. It's not going to be very tall. that look compared to the bigger bowl that's about the size I'm going for um, let's give it a color as well maybe it matches the um, the bowl I really should name these materials And then the idea I had was to basically put something in this, like a random food material. Uh, so let me get a separate circle, and this has eight sides, that's right, and bring it up. thing. 
there. And then this can be like a, a soup bowl or something. Um, so we'll have some random color, vaguely foodish. Like a green soup or something, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of reflective. I guess it's a liquid. <laughs> oh, this is a great meal. I'm not sure what type, uh, what time of day you would eat whatever this is <laughs> um, with fruit. The fruit might just be there for, for show or for storage. Uh, let me name this material. This is... Um, like a dish material, whatever you call these. Um, and we're shading these smooth to be consistent with how the bowl is right now. Yeah, we can call it breakfast, that works. Let's see, I guess we need a utensil to eat uh, mystery food with, um, I guess, a spoon. Spoons are weirdly hard to make. I've made one before. Uh, it didn't go super well. So let's see if I can do one in like 10 minutes. Um, but first, let me put these into their own collection. This is, I don't know how do you spell ramekin. Let me use the spelling that the, the, uh, the closed captions spelled it like that. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. Let's see if I can make something that looks sort of spoon-ish. So I'll start with a circle again, a uh, very, very small one, and I'm thinking I'll make it kind of like a, like a, a bowl with a, with a handle. It won't be perfectly bowl shaped. The, the end of a spoon is a really weird shape. Um, let's just mess around and see what happens. Um, here's here's my idea. We're gonna start with basically a bowl and see if we can turn it into a spoon. Like a really shallow bowl. 
And this is uh, this is too big right now, but we'll fix it. And then um, let me turn on what is this called? Proportional editing. This is like if I move one of these vertices, um, it will hmm. I don't remember how to make it smaller oh, there we go so it will proportionally move other vertices that are within this circle so I can kind of drag one of them and it will encourage all of the other ones to move with it. This looks very weird. Um, okay. We're just going to go with it. I'm going to start forming the handle out of this. Ooh, I want that off now. It's maybe a bit too shallow. having this issue last time I tried to make a spoon that they don't come to like a perfectly flat bowl shape at the end it's kind of like angled differently in the front versus the back um,
curve uh, better. some geometry overlapping here I think there we go give it some thickness Was weird my camera went somewhere got it back though This is uh, this is very odd looking. I think I'll call that close enough to a spoon. Um, let's give it a sort of metallic, uh, material. That's more like glass, uh, maybe not quite that smooth.
right, that's one. Um, spoon. Cool, so they have utensils to eat their mystery food now. Um, I'm not super happy with these spoons, but I think they're close enough. And it's 5.59, so uh, I'm gonna call that done for the day. We did a few neat things. Uh, we made these crates over here and added a tablecloth and some tabletop objects to this table. Uh, I think next time I stream I'll be playing Minecraft, so. Uh, but we'll return to Blender soon enough. Um, yeah. Thank you for modding. Um, Alright, uh, let me stop now. Hope everybody has a good day. <laughs>